Good morning, <clears throat> everyone. Hope you're, uh, the camera adjusted a little bit there. Hope you're having a super morning. Hope things are going good for you. Hope your day continues on the same, if it is. If not, I hope your day turns around and uh, you have a good one. So, finishing up this morning in Psalms 23. We went over the first four verses the first two days, and now we're finishing up with the last two. Yesterday we talked about God being with us in the hard times and leading us on the paths of righteousness. Verses 4 and 5 say, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. And then verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Ah, that brings a smile. I love verse 6. But before we get to verse 6, let's talk about verse 5. Verse 5 says, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. God prepares a table for his children. He gets it ready and he invites us to sit down and dine with him. Well, we know that dining means to fellowship. God says, I've got a table for you and I want you to sit down and have fellowship with me. Let's talk. Now, the unique thing about this table is it's a table for two. It's for you and for God. And the unique thing, other thing that I want to point out is, where does he say it is? In the presence of mine enemies. In the presence of my enemies. God says, let's put this table down right here in the middle of all your problems and I want to spend time with you. But now if you're going to let something else sit at the table with us, I've got to get up and leave because you're not going to pay attention to me. If you start thinking about your work life and it sits down at that table, God says, I have to get up. I can't be here. This is the time for you and for me. Thou anointest my head with oil. He fixes the table and he gives me a place of honor. In the time this was written, you anointed. Oil was a very big commodity. It was worth a lot of money. It was very valuable. So when you had an honored guest, you anointed their head with oil. And that's what God is saying to us there in verse 5. You are my honored guest. Stop and think about that for a minute. God says you, Kevin, or whatever your name is, are my honored guest. I'm not inviting anyone else to this table. It's going to be me, and it's going to be you. And we get to spend time together. I want to spend time with you is what God is saying. That is his desire. His desire is for us to get away with him and spend time. And it doesn't have to be hidden away. That's where he says, I want to be there in the midst of your trouble. Don't spend time with me only when things are good. Spend time with me when they're bad. We'll set this table up right here in the midst of your problems. And we'll have communion. We'll talk. Because there's no one. Here's the other thing about serving an omniscient God. He can be in all places at all times. And he's saying, there's no one more important to me than you. No one. When 
when we're sitting down, you're the most important thing I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking, you know, God's not thinking about, well, is the earth going to go off its axis or what's going to happen over here? No. I'm worried about what Kevin's thinking about is what he says when we sit down. And he gives me that place of honor. But the question is, well, who's sitting at your table this morning? Who's sitting there? Because someone's sitting there, which means something is occupying your mind. What is it? Is it of God? Or is it of the world? Is it of self? Is it of Satan? What occupies your mind? Here's the great part about our loving Father. He tells us that we get to occupy our mind with whatever we want to. He said, I love you enough, I give you the freedom that you can occupy your mind with whatever you want to occupy it with. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your time. I want you to spend time with me, he says, because you love me. Not because you have to, not because you feel obligated to, but because you love me and you want to. So, he puts that table, which is our mind out there for us to sit with him anytime we want to. Then verse 6 says, Surely, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You ever think about that? Goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. God is chasing after you with goodness and mercy. Before you're saved, He's chasing after you with that mercy. Going, you don't have to pay the price of your sins. I have the solution. Please take my mercy. If God didn't want us to take his mercy, he wouldn't have offered it in the first place. Please take my mercy. I'm following after you with my mercy. But then it doesn't stop there. After you're saved, he's then chasing after you with goodness. I've got something good for you is what he's saying. Please take it. I've got something good for you. And when we say no and... I say it enough. I'm, I'm not bragging about it, but I say it enough. I say, no, God, I don't want what you've got today. I'll settle for second best. And that's what I do. I settle for second best. And that doesn't make any sense. Except really and truly it does because we as broken humans are faulty. What do I mean by that? I can see what's in front of me. I know exactly what it looks like. I know what to expect from it. I have some semblance of control. Not nearly as much as I think I do, but I do have some semblance of control. But the goodness that God has for me, that he's following after me with, I don't know what it is. I don't know what he's got. Do I know it's good? Absolutely. How do I know that? Because the Bible says so? No. The Bible does say so. I know that because when in times of obedience I've stopped and said, I want that goodness. And he's freely given it. Freely. And when I received it, it was more than I could have ever hoped for. Every time. It's been good. So why won't I stop and say, okay, I want what you got that's good today. Give it to me. I want it. We should desire that more than anything in this world. The goodness that God chases after me with. I should want it more than anything. But I find myself to be like Paul when he said, I know the things that are of God and I know they're good and I want to do them 
but I find myself doing the opposite. That is the struggle we'll face until we leave this earth. There's no getting around it. Self will always want to sit down. That's the other thing. We'll want to sit down at that table that we talked about by ourselves. I don't want anybody else. I don't talk to myself because when I talk to myself, I'm always right. I don't have to second guess anything. I don't have to take suggestions. It's just me and I get to make all the decisions. We love self. Think of Terrell Owens is saying, I love me some me. Well, everybody made a big deal out of that, but the truth is we as humans love me some me. We just do. And we're going to fight that every day. But I'm asking you today, and I'm asking myself, let's stop. If you're not saved, stop and receive that mercy God has for you. And if you are, let's, let's experience some of that goodness. There's too much wickedness in this earth, on this earth. Let's stop just today. Just I'm, I'm, That's my prayer for you and me. Heavenly Father, help us stop today and look for that goodness that you have for us because I know that you got it and you want to give it freely. Amen. I hope you prayed that prayer with me today and I hope you have a great day. I love you and thank you for watching.